Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 19 of my linear algebra tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to talk about upper and lower triangular matrices, and I'm also going to show you how to calculate area using determinants. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so there were some questions about what exactly is an upper and lower triangular matrix, which I brought up earlier. And they make it really easy for us to calculate determinants, so they're very, very important. So basically, if you have a matrix like this, I'm just going to create a upper triangular matrix. And all it is, is you just have zeros everywhere underneath of the diagonal. So this is an upper triangular matrix. And yes, it's okay to have zeros in the upper part, just as long as you have all zeros in the bottom part. And likewise, if you want to create a lower triangular matrix, you have to have zeros in all of the upper parts above the diagonal. And as per how we would go and create one, it's pretty easy. Basically, what we're going to do is just zero out all those parts. So let's create an upper triangular matrix. So what do I want to do here? Well, the uh, first thing I want to do is get rid of that negative 2 on the second row. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to go 1 half R1 plus R2. And I'm going to place this in R2. And if I do that, I'm going to be able to come in and zero this out. This becomes an 8. This becomes a 1. This becomes a 2. Then I want to zero out the first element in the third row. So I'm going to take R3 minus 1 fourth times R1 and of course place that inside of R3. And if I do that, this is going to become 0. This is going to become a 3. This is going to be 7 over 2. And this is going to be negative 1 half. Up next, I'm going to want to zero out the fourth uh, row in the first element, of course. So I'm going to get R4 minus 3 over 4 times R1. And when I do that, this becomes a 0, this becomes a negative 1, this becomes 5 over 2, and this becomes a negative 3 over 2. Now what I want to do is come in and on the third row, get rid of that 3 that we have right there. So to do so, I say R3 minus 3 over 8 times R2. Put this inside of R3. Whenever I do that, I get 0, 0. This is starting to become a little bit more complicated. This is 25 over 8 and negative 5 over 4. Then I want to zero out the negative 1 in the bottom row. And to do that, I'm going to take R4 plus 1 over 8 times R2 and place that inside of R4. That then is going to turn this into a 0, this into a 0. This is going to be 21 over 8 and this is going to be 5 over 4. And then finally to get the final matrix that we're looking for here, I'm going to take R4 minus 21 over 25 times R3, and I'm going to place that in R4 to finish up everything. And that's going to give me the values for the final row of 0, 0, 0, negative 1 over 5, like that. And I'm going to be able to come in here and calculate the determinant for this by just going and taking the diagonal and multiplying those values. So this is going to be 4 times 8 times 25 over 8 times negative 1 fifth. And if I do that, I get negative 20. So there you go. That is how we can go and create an upper triangular matrix and use it to find the determinant. Now, something that's really interesting is we're actually going to be able to find the area using determinants. So let's say that we have a vector that is 2, 4. So it's going to go up here and come down here. So this is our first vector. And we have another one that is going to be 4, 0. Well, there you are. 
Well, we're going to be able to come in and create a parallelogram with these parts, just like this. And we're going to be able to calculate our area. So if we have A being a vector with the value of 2, 4, and B being a vector with the values of 4, 0, we can create a matrix from this by taking those vectors and throwing them inside of there. And we're going to be able to find the area for that shape by getting the absolute value of 2 times 0 minus 4 times 4, which of course gives us a value of 16. And the area of a parallelogram is what? The base times the height. So the base would be 4 times 4, which also gives us 16. All right, but we're going to be able to also find the area of a shape that has been transformed on our coordinate plane. And to do so, all we need is the original area as well as the transformation that was done on the matrix. So let's say we have a square and it has a point at negative 7 and 6, negative 4, 6, negative 7 and 3, and negative 4 and 3. So let's draw in this square here, and there we go. Now let's say that this is going to be transformed dramatically. So let's go and take what we have here. So we'll just take these vectors and throw them inside of our matrix. And as you can see, I'm just laying them down horizontally, and we'll be doing more with this as the tutorial continues. So there's our matrix, and we're going to perform a transformation on it that's going to warp it pretty dramatically. So let's try 1, 2, 0, and negative 2 as our transformation. And this is going to give us results of a brand new shape that's going to be the x values across the top here, or the y values across the bottom. And I'll draw this in here as soon as I'm done labeling everything. Okay, so there is a quite a different, dramatically different shape. And if we take all these individual pieces, Actually, I don't even have enough room here, but I'll just draw them in there. Okay, so there we go. We got our different uh, two extra lines on there that are going to represent negative 12 at the lowest point. So if I go 5 and negative 12, that's going to put me down here. And then if I go 8 and negative 12, that's going to put me down here. Negative 4 and 2 and negative 6 puts this right here. And then we'll have an additional point right there. So this is a really warped and different looking type of parallelogram. I can then go and draw in these shapes. And we're going to be able to use a determinant to find this area. How do we do it? Well, we take our original area. So we'll just say original area. And that is for the square before the transformation. So it is 3 by 3. So that gives us 9. And then what we're going to do is get the determinant for our transformation, right like this, which is going to be equal to 1 times negative 2 minus 0 times 2, which is equal to negative 2. And I can find the new area of this transformed shape just by getting the absolute value of the original area times the determinant of our transformation which is equal to absolute value of 9 times negative 2, which is equal to 18. And if we come in here and we calculate this, remember base times height. So our height in this situation is going to be 6 times the base, which is going to be 3, which the last time I checked still equals 18. So there you go. A whole bunch of more information about determinants, and we'll be moving into other topics in the next video. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.